right? So in this role play, the um, Daniel is going to be the end user, and he's an IT director who calls me in. Uh, and so I'm doing my first meeting. Hi, Daniel Bill, Bill Soto. Good to meet you. Daniel. Good to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for calling me in. You bet. So, all right. So how's your day going this morning? Doing okay? Doing all right. Trying Good. to kind of get as many things done and get some questions answered for us so we can get on our way and into our new building. Are you moving to a new building? Okay, we know that's the first thing I was going to ask is, what, why is it that you need a new phone system? I mean, you, you call me up, you say you, you know, you're looking for a new phone system, but we didn't really talk much on the phone. What's What's the main reason for the new phone system? Well, we, we've outgrown uh, the one we've had in there, and so we're going to be moving into a new office, new new building, so we need to get a new system that's going to grow for our, our company. Oh, okay, great. And I'm just going to take, uh, I have a little question question sheet here. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything, okay? That sounds good. Uh, I'll just write down some notes as we're going along here. as well. Okay, great. Got this new uh, neat pen from this company, Sorcom. It's really cool. <laughs> Anyway, so when you say that it's outgrown it, how many telephones do you actually have today? Well, currently we've got 35 digital phones in the office and in the uh, customer service area, and we've got about 10 out in the warehouse, just analog phones, just for uh, extensions back and forth. Okay, just analog phones? Okay. And 35 of these digital telephones, right? Right, right. And okay. we've got uh, those uh, via digital phones out there. Oh, you have an Avaya phone system currently? Yeah. Okay. And how many phone lines do you have? Do you know? I think we've got uh, 15 different lines coming in right now from uh, AT&T. Okay. 15 lines. That's quite a bit. Yeah, I, I think we, we've kind of blown past that, too. We might need to look at doing something bigger. Um, looked at a couple options, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of see what, what makes sense. I think right now we're looking at a T1. Uh, that'll give us enough lines. I think it's a little bit cheaper than doing... Uh, 25 different analog lines. So. Yeah, actually, you're at that threshold. Right around 12 or 13 phone lines are probably the same cost as a T1 to get more lines. So you're correct. I can look into that for you. Great. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Since we're on that, would it be possible for me to get a copy of your phone bill? Yeah, you So bet. I can see what you're, uh, what you're using today. Okay. Sure. And we'll get a copy of that. All right. Now, for... Um, as, as we go through this, who else besides yourself is involved in making the decision for the phone system? Well, well Rose is the comptroller. She, she's really going to be in charge of the one for uh, uh, making making the, the, the payment decision on, on that side of. Oh, she's the money. She's, she's the money gal. She's the money gal. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have we'll have Rose helping on that. But we've, we've got a team of four people. So the other two, okay. uh, you know, Bob is the department manager for our warehouse and manufacturing. So he's he's really looking at what we need as far as we're growing. Their, their division is really the area that's grown the most, so he's, he's got a lot okay. of say in what he's looking for. Uh, and then lastly, you know, we've got Harry in customer service. He's, he's the lead customer service rep. Um, and that's what the business is built off of uh, him so far, getting out there making sales. So. Right. Yeah. It's near and dear to my heart, no doubt about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to have these four people. And uh, one of the things that I would like to do as we move you know, through this process is that I would like to bring a a, actually a demonstration system. Uh, you have a nice conference room here. I can set it up in your conference room and we can actually see the phone system working live. Is okay. that something that you'd be open to? Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. I don't think I've seen anything like that. Okay, well great, great. We can, we can set that up a little bit later for a date for that. We can get everybody together on that. Okay. Now, when is it that you, you have to have the system installed to say you're moving? Uh, we, we're going to be in and operating on November 1st. Okay. So we, we've got to have it live by November 1st. Okay, we have to have a live on November 1st, so basically we're right around the beginning of September here, but we're looking to make a decision, uh, actually right by the end of this month, kind of like the latest time, really. You need to have uh, your purchase made about four weeks before you want it installed. And that'll give you enough time for basically all the planning, ordering the equipment, getting okay. everything here, getting it programmed. Okay. So we'll look at that. Okay, great. So your current system, how long have you had it installed? Uh, we, we've had it in there a couple of years, um, about 12 years now. 12 years? So okay. uh, definitely before before I was hired on, but... Okay, so you didn't purchase this system? No, 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 it's been in there. All right, have you ever purchased a phone system before? No, no, I haven't. Oh, okay. This is the first time. A little bit different than buying a car, isn't it? <laughs> Quite a bit, yeah. <laughs> I do this all the time. 
Now, with the current system, is it rented or owned? Oh, we own it. Oh, you own it outright? Okay, great. Do you know if you still have a maintenance contract on it? Yeah, we do. Uh, I, think, uh, I think ABC company here in town has been servicing it for us. Uh, trying to find, find the okay. phones that we need when we've, when we've needed to add. Okay, would you know how much you're spending annually on the maintenance of the phone system? Yeah, about 2000 a year. Okay. And I know uh, Rose would have more details, but it's about 2000 Okay, that's fine. And with the uh, current vendor, you said they're ABC, are you happy with them? You know, they've been okay. It's, they, they've been taking care of us. Okay. And I can safely assume they're also going to be bidding this project as well. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've got a, a new Avaya system that, that we've got for uh, that they're okay. bidding against. Okay, so have you uh, reached out to any other vendors besides myself and your and your current vendor? Well, there there is another one that, that we've uh, looked at. Um, some of the other IT managers have, have uh, brought up the name Switchbox, so looking into them as well. Okay, all right. And for the um, for your little bit about your phone system here, are you currently using voicemail today? Yeah, we we are using voicemail. Okay. Um, Okay. Does everybody have voicemail then? Yeah, just just about everybody has that. Some of the uh, analog phones don't have it, of course, in the warehouse. Right. Okay. All right. Good enough. And is there any music on hold or custom message on hold that you use for the company? We do. We've got we've got one of the uh, the tape cassette that's feeding into the ah, vibe. good old never broke, huh? Yeah. Once <laughs> One of those little players that you just plug in, it's got the cassette, cassette tape in right, there? Right, right. Okay. Pre-recorded stuff on there. Pre-recorded stuff, excellent. All right, good, we can take that and we can convert that a little bit to a little bit different medium, probably MP3, and we can load okay. it in the phone system for you. Okay. But we can we can work with your company that does that for you and handle that. Right now, um, so we're gonna have your phone lines here, I'm just go through my list. Any paging in the system at all? Any yeah. Any paging in here? They, they've got a couple of those, uh, those Bajan speakers out there. Bogans? Yeah, the B O G E N S. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we call them Bogans. Oh, that's Bogans. all right. Yeah, Bogans. Bogans. You're not supposed to know that I am. Well, we've got a few of those out there. Are we going to be able to use that in, in the new building? Actually, yes, you can. If you want to use those, you can. They're going to have a page and controller. We can connect to the page and controller. Then you can access it and page like you do today. Okay. Do you have any other paging? Like, do they have besides the warehouse? I know because um, you're manufacturing. Are you manufacturing all the? Um, supermarket displays right right so, so we, we've got a couple different zones uh, we've got two actually in the office we, we have one that's gonna be our customer service area and then we've got an all, an all page uh, just in case anybody's out in the break room or something like that where we can't reach them uh, so basically you want at least one zone and then an all call right and do it that way okay all right good enough and by the way to, to ask I know that Mick, who are your biggest customers you manufacture the supermarket displays who do you sell to yeah, uh, Kroger's our biggest account right now. Really? Uh, so so we, we try to make sure that we've got guys on the phone for them uh, just about any, any time of day, even after hours. Okay. Uh, and then and then the other one, uh, <laughs> sorry, that's the one I hadn't heard of actually. Uh, Harry actually managed that account, but I think it's a oh, that's okay. Lion, Lion something. Oh, Food Lion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Food Lion chain of supermarkets. I know them, but I don't do too yeah. much of the sales side. Harry, Harry. Well, they're not that. quite as big as Kroger's, but they're they're a good chain. So you keep pretty busy. No wonder you're growing. So I guess that's your right. business that, that's good in this in this uh, in this economy to be growing like that is fantastic. So you're getting a new building moving. So that's that's great to hear. Obviously, everybody needs food. Well, Harry's been working <laughs> hard. He's been working hard on those accounts. All right, good. Now on your um, on your phone bill, you have. Uh, your service, do you have a separate company for long distance? Or is it the same company that provides you the phone lines? What I'd like to yeah. get is kind of like all your phone bills to see if we can lower your monthly recurring expenditures as well. Okay. Uh, right now it's just AT&T on the, on the phone okay. lines. Okay. And how about for your internet service? Uh, yeah, we have uh, cable. You have cable? Uh, okay, great. And has that been suffice for you for your needs, for your internet? Yeah, I think so. Cable. Okay. As, far, as far as we can tell, I mean, we've got the amount we needed currently, but as we grow, okay. we might have to look bigger. All right. And uh, can I get a copy of your extension list? So yeah. I'll, I'm, I'll sure somebody, I'm sure somebody has one of those. It yeah. kind of helps them with the phone count. I'm also, before I leave, I'd like to go see where the uh, where the phone room is today, where you have the phone system installed today. Okay. All right. And just see you know, what you have in there and see all the equipment and everything. All right. All right. Let me 
me get with Bob to check this. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, you're looking at a phone system, you're growing quite a bit. Uh, you're looking at a T1. Mm -hmm. Going into the new location, uh, how many, you know, it's going to outgrow this one. How many more extensions are you looking at installing in the new site? In the new site? Yeah, after running all the numbers, it looks like we're going to have probably about 60 different uh, digital phones out there and, okay. and maybe 20 analog phones in, in the warehousing manufacturing area. Okay, so now we're looking at 60, and, and uh, I'll look at, you know, IP phones. The Avaya phones that you have now, they are 12 years old. You're not going to be able to use those in the new IP phone system. I hope you realize that. Right. All right. We can do the, we can do the best and try and get them sold for you. Uh, there might be a market. Don't hold your breath too much at what you might get for those phones. But okay. we can try. You know, one of the services that we have with our clients is that they have an old phone system. Uh, part of you know working with us is that we'll go ahead and try and find a buyer for your existing phone system and all your phones. Okay. And see if we can get some money for it. But like I said, don't hold your breath. You know, it's uh, they're old. Okay. Okay. We've gone through a couple of generations there of, uh, of telephones, but you'd be very happy with the uh, with the phones that we import. Okay. Great. All right. And then 20 analog phones, you say? Right. Those are just uh, the ones that collect the dust on the, on the manufacturing floor. Right. Yeah, they get pretty dirty. Okay. So going to your new location. Um, well, let's let me let's take a little bit more first before I get to your new site. Let me talk a little bit more about how you run your phone system today. When the calls are coming in, uh, are they answered by an automated attendant or do you have a live operator? Uh, we, we've got a live operator that answers those calls right now. Okay, now with 15 lines, that's that's quite a bit. Do you have more than one or is it just centralized with one operator? Uh, just, just her. Okay, so what happens when she gets three or four calls at the same time? Uh, she normally has to put them on hold and page out or, or try to transfer right. or catch Harry or do that. one of the guys in service. All right, well we can work on that a little bit, see if we can't uh, make it a little bit easier for her to answer the phone and a little bit better service to your customers instead of just being put on hold right away. Because, uh, you know, actually when I was waiting for you, you know, for our appointment, I happened to see her out front and, and I heard her say, you know, please hold, please hold, please hold, and then she went back. So uh, she does do that. So let's see if we can't find a solution for that. Okay. All right. Do you use any automated attendant at all? Uh, yeah, in the evening we wanted to, to be transferred to auto attendant. Okay, so your what are your business hours? I work from 8 to 6. Is it strictly uh, Monday through Friday? Uh, sometimes on weekends, if we have a big enough job. Okay. And when that happens, do you still want to go an automated attendant? Do you want it off the automated attendant? Yeah, we, we actually need to be able to change it kind of on the fly for when those scenarios happen. It's, it's, not, okay. a, it's not a set every second Saturday or anything like that. Right, right, right. So, or even maybe if you have to, you know, close a little bit earlier on a Friday or something like that, you can just switch it right over the, exactly. to the night mode, if you will. Yeah. All right, so we'll go to the, okay, that'll be great. So, um, when the calls come in, it just rings her phone, and uh, you already told me you have different phones ringing after hours, just go to the automated attendant. Right. Okay. Now, does the operator, does she have anybody's extension appearing on her phone? Yeah, she's got one of those, it's almost the size of her phone, that, that box on the side just yeah, yeah. lit up all the time. You nickname it the busy box. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, just showing it's a busy land field, basically. It's just showing everybody's busy. Right. She can push the button and call the person as well. That's what she has. Okay, yeah. perfect. We'll, we can do the same thing still. Uh, one of the options that I'll show you when we do the demonstration is basically a, a web-based operator panel. So actually on the screen, she'll be able to see who's in the phone, who's not on the phone, and she'll even be able to transfer calls on the screen if she wants to, okay? But I'll show you that option in case, you know, is, is, can she be part of the demonstration when we do the demo? Sure, we can ask you to come in. Okay, yeah, because I'd like to, for her to see the, uh, basically, uh, console that looks that way. It might, it might be a little bit easier for her. Now on the IT side, am I going to have to download something on her PC or give her administrative rights for that? Yeah, good question. Uh, one of the things that we use is a browser-based uh, type of solution, specifically so I don't have to load anything on computers. Perfect. Now there are, there are operator panels that uh, will do exactly what you just said, and you have to load something in all the, all the computers, and uh, obviously you know, you're the IT manager, you know your stuff. All of a sudden, you have to give them admin rights and there's, you know, other stuff you have to download and make it work. And then if there's a problem with the PC, you know, what was the problem with it, right? So ours is browser-based, can be accessed from any computer on the network, but you are the one who give them permission to do it. Okay. So nobody can access it unless you've given them those rights. That works. Okay. And we'll go over that in the demonstration. There's different things that you can do with that panel as well. I call it a multifunctional panel because it can be used for the operator, 
or it could also be used for a call center solution. I was going to talk to you a little bit about your customer service area because I know you, you know, when you spoke, you have four people in there. Right. So, you know, you could also listen in on calls. You, you know, there's different things that you can do with that panel based on the permissions that you give that extension user, okay, for, for when they log in, right? Okay. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but the panel is very, very flexible. Okay. All right. Um, and you said that she does page people for calls. Is there anybody else that pages for calls um, besides her? Mainly her, but every now and then the, uh, the manufacturing manager, Bob, will have a page that he has to make. Okay, so not everybody in the company pages. No, it's, mainly it, her. You contain it to the operator, the, the manufacturing manager. Right. Out there. Okay. All right, fair enough. And is faxing still a big part of your business? Yeah, you bet it is. That's part of the reason I have all those lines. Okay. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of our orders, probably the majority of them, still come in as faxes. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's nice though to receive those faxes. It, it is. <laughs> it keeps the lights on. It'll keep the lights on and keep us moving, right? That's right. Well, let's, we'll we're going to give you an option there uh, because today, I mean, I realize you've got those three fax machines there, and I know I don't know how much you spend on ink modules uh, for those fax machines, but we do have a solution that's built into the phone system these days, which is fax to email. So I can receive the fax and go ahead and convert it into a PDF able to send it by email. Okay. And this way all the faxes are actually scanned in. Alright, as a permanent file. Okay. You know, one of the tough things about faxes, right, is that you get them in and you know a lot of people scan them and then put them away on a hard drive. Okay, so we can do that for you automatically. We can send it to the direct person needs to be sent to you as well. So right now they kind of just stay up at the front counter. Yeah, uh -huh. depending on how you want to set it up. I mean you have your own email server. So what happens is when we receive it, we can send that specific um, fax to a person or a group of people, depending on how who you want it sent to. So you actually manage that, that piece of it. Great. Okay. Now, do you have any conferencing in here? Is there a conferencing unit? Do you do a lot of no. conference calls? No. No, no, no. You don't need the big uh, star phone, you know? No, yeah. I, I think we're okay with that. We, we don't normally have to get around a big surfboard table for those calls. Okay. All right. Good enough. Now, do you have any type of, um, of you know, group meetings or internal conference calls or anything like that? You can get on the phone talking or just a quick group meeting or anything like that? Yeah, we'll, we'll usually have uh, on Monday mornings, we'll, we'll have an IT manager, myself, and some of my sub-managers, uh, Bob and his manufacturing manager, get on the phone with the owner. Okay. And then do some quick calls like that, little, little Monday morning... Uh, right. Yeah, he'll usually call in the owner call with his cell phone right now. Okay, uh, which, which actually reminds me, uh, the owner would, would like to have the ability to have a phone in his house. Oh, he would? So okay. He's, uh, not racking up his cell phone, just like calling in every Monday morning. Okay. Is that possible? Go ahead. Yeah, with the IP phones, what we can do actually is that we can connect. We do use a, a VPN, and I would okay. recommend, a, we can talk about it, a router at his house where it can be VPN directly into the, uh, the phone system. And so this way it's a very secure connection. And then he can have an IP telephone sitting in his house that's nothing more than an extension. Okay. Great. So you can call him with three or four digits the same way you dial him in here, and he can do the same thing. Okay. Right. And he's not using his, his cell phone minutes. Right. And he has access to the phone system completely. So that'll work. Thank you very much. I'll make sure that uh, I highlight that when I do the demo as far as a remote phone is concerned. Okay. And um, now, do you have any employees that travel often? Uh, we've got five sales reps that are always in the field of calling on, on program food line. Oh, okay. Um, is it nationwide? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, they, okay. they, they're all split out in, in regions. So we have one guy that's mainly northeast, one southeast, one central, and one northwest and southwest. Okay. And how mostly are they keeping in touch with the phone company with, with the office today? Is it by cell phone? Yeah, cellular. Okay. Is it possible for me to get a handle on what your monthly recurring expenditure is for your cell phone bills? Uh, yeah, we'll get that from Rose. Okay. I appreciate that. I'd like to take a look at that as well, see if I can save any money. Yeah, that any, any good help. Okay. Okay, and um, that was about it there in terms of just your your overall functionality there. But with your um, with your customer service, when people are calling in today for customer service, how are they? I mean, what are you doing today? I mean, you've got the basic buy a key system. Is there a ring group or something, or how are they handling? Yeah, and right now it's a ring group, and, and that's something we like to see possibly if it's. Uh, 
an available option to us, uh, especially with, with Kroger. You know, we, we try to keep them uh, to a minimum of five minutes on, on hold, or to a maximum of five minutes on hold. We, we don't want them having to hold much longer than that with our current call-ins. Um, so we've got to bring it into a group, and uh, Sue back in the front is trying to monitor the budget to see you know, how, how long they've been on hold. Who's so. available, who's not available. Right. Try and get somebody in so, there. Okay. I, I don't know if we need to have reports necessarily, but just some way that we can maybe even have like a ticker board or something like that to, okay. to have those four guys saying, hey, you know, this, this line needs to be picked up now. Right, right. And you can see it. We'll work on that with, with our call center solution. Uh, and again, using that operator panel that I spoke to you about, you can actually set it up in such a way that when they call in for customer service, if you're still being picked up by a live operator, she can transfer it to the customer service queue, if you will. You know, so that's a, a group of phones in that queue. And then in that queue, if someone's available, it brings them right away. If someone's not available, it will hold the calling queue. They can actually hear, depending on if you would like to do this, if you know it's the Kroger's number, because they're calling in on their number, mm -hmm. right, that you've given them, because they're a VIP customer, they can actually hear a commercial on there. Instead of hearing your standard music on hold, let the people who are calling in from Kroger something that pertains to them. Maybe you've got a special that's specifically for Kroger's, mm -hmm. right? And they can be hearing that while they're waiting. Okay? And then when it calls in a customer service and the agent answers, I mean, she'll see it on the phone or you'll see it on the phone. They'll say Kroger's, because we can, we can go ahead and put that on the display. But when they answer the phone, you'll even say Kroger's call. And there's no way to miss it, because you know I know that they're answering for different companies. Right. But when they answer that call, it's going to say Kroger's call, and they're going to know exactly how to address that client. Pretty neat, isn't it? That is pretty neat. Yeah. So we can do things like that nature. And that's some of the things that I'd like to do with the demo. So. Um, is it Bob and, and uh, no, no, it was Harry, who's in charge of customer service. Right, Harry's customer Yeah, if Harry can be part of the demonstration, I'd like to show that to him. So, okay. and different ways of how that can be managed. Okay. Okay, so we'll go over that. Okay. Is there anything else that you've been thinking about? I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're jumping now from, from a, you know, pretty much a legacy, you know, analog digital phone system to the world of IP. There's a lot that we can do. Any more thoughts on other things that you'd like to say? Yeah, I've listed a couple of different questions that we had about, um, really, I, I just want an IP-based system, but I'm not concerned about voice quality on that. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons we've looked just at T1. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a very big uh, misconception out there that when you look for an IP-based phone system, that automatically, uh, you know, you, you have to have voice over IP phone service. You know, right away everybody thinks of Vonage. You know, well, my brother-in-law has Vonage, he doesn't like it. Uh, it. It's very different in the world of IP-based phone systems. And basically, when you install the phone system, you're moving into a new building. So you have the luxury, and when you're running that, you're running all Cat5 or Cat6 cable in there, I'm sure? Cat6. Cat6, okay. Uh, at every office, I would recommend dual drops, okay? Now, most of our installations are all on a single Cat5e cable. Um, you know, that's much, most of them because the people already have the wiring installed. They don't have to wire more. The, the bottleneck, or where call quality issues usually come in with a voice over IP phone system or an IP phone system is not in the local area network. Okay, your LAN, you know, it's a 100 meg LAN or CAT6, a gig LAN, that's not your bottleneck. I mean, a voice conversation is like 60K. That's, that's not gonna be your problem. The problem is when you're going out on the network, too many companies think that a standard DSL is going to hold 10 phone calls or something of that nature. And, and it doesn't. It's very poor quality. So that's when you run into a problem. Okay. Now, in today's world, the Internet's getting better. But for what you want to do, you just want to connect to standard T1, I can definitely get you some voice over IP service for 30 days if you would like to try it besides your T1. So this way, when you're making long distance calls, it goes out on the voice over IP because it's unlimited long distance. And you can test the voice quality yourself. Would that be okay? You can try. Yeah. But I mean, I would recommend in your new office, you put in two drops to each office. And where I was headed with that is that you can keep your data network that you're in complete control over, all right? Keep it separate from your voice network. Okay. All right? And what we'll do with the routers between the two routers, we'll just build a static route between them. So this way that people who are on the data network can access features like the operator panel. Okay. Right? And they can go through and get that. But all your voice calls are going to be on one LAN and your data is going to be on a separate LAN. That'd be okay? That, that would work. 
Okay. And as far as the hardware, I guess when we go back to the phone room, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the, if there's anything else that we need as far as you know, a different router, more switches, uh, thing like that, is that something yeah. you can you'd recommend? Well, when you're looking at, do you, are your switches today, do you know if they have power over Ethernet? They do. They do? Okay. You probably have at least a layer two switch or a pretty or a smart switch. Right. Probably. You can reuse those switches. That won't be a problem. Okay. It's just a matter of how many phones. You need 60 phones, you probably don't have 60 ports. Uh, not at this point. Yeah, so uh, you don't have to purchase the data switch from me. You can purchase your own data switch. That's not a problem. Okay, great. And uh, if you already got a good price on those and you're comfortable with your data switch, uh, which brand are you using? Uh, right now we use uh, LG Ericsson. LG Ericsson. I'm not that familiar with those, but I'm sure that we can look it up. I'm sure they have quality of service settings in them and things right. of that nature, if they're POE especially. Okay, all right. So you can reuse those switches and then have them all over the network. And then wherever you have a data jack, you can plug in a phone. Okay. And of course, the beauty of the IP phone, which you don't have today, is that when I unplug a phone, plug it anywhere in the network, it retains its identity. The extension number doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Because today, the identity for your phones is in that jack. Right. Right. And now with the world of IP, you're completely mobile inside the office and plug in wherever you'd like. I like that. Yeah. So that'll work too. All right. What else are we thinking about? Um, well, as far as as far as voicemail, I know we've kind of outgrown our voicemail. You know, the 35 phones that are using it right now mm -hmm. have kind of maxed out on our, our 16 hours. How much voicemail storage are we going to add with your system? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked that question. That's always a, a big question with customers because it, there's such a change going from legacy voicemail where sometimes you have a little card that plugs into the phone system or something of that nature, and you're very limited. I'm sure it's also by ports. You probably have a four-port system. Right. Right. So now with the world of IP, it's completely different. You know, so for example, you've got 60 phones. If you were able to receive 60 phone calls, right, all those 60 calls can go to voicemail. There is no really port limitation. Okay. Okay. However, you know, it's funny. I carry a little cheat sheet around with me because that's a that's a very common question. And uh, actually, a, a standard we record everything in a WAV file for voicemail messages. Okay. When we do we do call recording in the system as well. We'll talk more about that. We save that as an MP3 file. But a WAV file basically is 1.25 megabytes uh, of hard to, uh, one minute, a one minute voicemail message is 1.25 megabytes. Okay. So if you have 10 minutes of voicemail storage, it's 12.5 megs, right? Okay. If you have 50 extensions, that's 625 megabytes of storage. Okay. If you have 100 extensions, that's 1.2 gigs of storage. Yeah. You got a 500 gig hard drive with our solution. You're, you're not going to touch it. Okay. Okay. So don't concern yourself about voicemail storage, and I'll also show you how you can administer the voicemail parameters. So if you have, uh, you can set it so you know maximum of maybe 20 messages per mailbox if you want to do that. Okay. Maximum message length is two minutes. If people are leaving messages longer than two minutes, we have a different problem. <laughs> okay. Well, I think our biggest problem is uh, we'll get the messages on the phone, and we, we've got the, the voicemail integration with Outlook, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it's being caught in the phones, and so they're having to go in and delete it, so it's filling it up, and that's how we're hitting that match. Right? Ah, okay. So you, you actually pay to buy it for the, that integration? Yeah. Over that. Yeah. Okay, well, we have that as well. Now, the nice part is, because you're correct, voicemail storage isn't really that much of a big item these days. People always ask the question, but at the end of the day, when they actually install the phone system, all the voicemails go into email. And so then what we do automatically is that you can purge them automatically from the phone system. Because if they're already being sent to your email and you've got your droid and that's already integrated with your email, right? right? So now you have your email here that has a WAV file attached to it. You also got it in your inbox, okay? So why have it in your phone? So you can delete it out of the phone? Immediately. Okay, that's one thing we yeah. can't do. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's so, great. and for the people that want to see the red light blinking because they want it in their phone, they can leave it in their phone. Okay. Okay. And, you know, it, it could be that some warehouse workers, things of that nature, maybe they don't have an email address. Right. Yeah. Some of the right. analog extensions. Well. Yeah. So we can do that as well. Okay. Well, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we went through that. Um, one of the other things as far as my, my network, mm -hmm. uh, we've got a couple of Wi Fi access points just to work with mm -hmm. the. Uh, the manufacturing center. Uh, is, is any of the stuff that we're looking at, is that going to interfere with that? Any, any cautions that we need to take? Well, no, it won't interfere with your with your Wi-Fi. Um, you have, do you have people that 
are using you know, cordless phones or Wi-Fi phones today in the manufacturing facility? Uh, we don't currently, but uh, that's, I, I don't know, do they have any Wi-Fi phones? Can we do Wi-Fi phones? Yeah, you can, there are uh, telephones that will integrate beautifully with our system that will work with your access points. Okay. So it's basically an extension of the phone system, and actually we can even set it up so that when someone calls your desk extension, it rings the wireless at the same, exact same time. All right, so whether you're at your desk or whether you're walking around the manufacturing floor, you can answer the call. And you can transfer it, put them on hold, the same thing with any other phone. Okay. Okay. We even have the ability, and this might sound a little Star Trek-y, all right? I noticed you have a droid. There's actually a, a free client that we can load on your droid and make it an extension of the phone system. Okay. And that be neat? That'd be pretty cool. So all of a sudden, your droid can have a little application on it that is an extension from the phone system. So you could be, you know, wherever, airport in Fiji, and you connect over your wireless broadband, and that extension will connect to the phone system that's back here in Texas. And you can pick up your droid and dial three digits and talk to somebody here over wireless broadband. That's pretty neat. So whether it's here or somewhere else in the world. So we'll talk more about that, but that's an application where you might be able to use your existing endpoints and still connect to the phone system that way, and that's been anyway. Hmm. I'm here to save like you money. That's what I'm here to do, Dan. I like the sound of that. Okay. Um, now, we haven't talked about other things, but you do have those, those uh, salespeople. One of the features that, that we'll discuss here is, is a Find Me, Follow Me application, because if you don't know where that salesperson is, you're always calling them on their cell phone. I can place an IP phone in their office as well, in their home office. And when you call their extension, it rings their extension in their home office first, and then if they don't answer, it can ring their cell phone. Okay. Okay? So this way it can find them. So basically you let the phone system find them, but you may not be able, you may not have to call their cell phone right away. If they're already sitting at their desk in their home office, they can just pick up over the internet. Okay. And you look at that as well. Is that going to tie up multiple lines on our system doing it that way? Oh, great question. When you're, when you're doing that, first of all, the first call you make, when it answers, when it, uh, it goes first to their home office, that's just over the internet. So that's not tying up any phone lines whatsoever. Okay, that's right. just an extension to extension? Just extension to extension okay. call, good question. If it doesn't find them there, then it grabs a phone line and calls their cell phone, which is what you're doing today anyway. Okay. All right, so at least we have the option of calling them on their desk phone first before it goes to their cell phone. Okay. And hopefully uh, that'll lower your, that phone bill that you have as well. So we already talked about also your, um, your automated attendant. Now during the day, would it be okay if we if we looked at maybe an alternative uh, for your receptionist where if she doesn't pick up in a certain amount of rings, right? Because today she's got 15 lines she's answering. So if she's calling in and it's ringing, you know, five, six, seven times, and what's her name? I'm sorry. Sue. Sue. Maybe um, it can go to an announcement that says, hi, this is Sue, I'm the main receptionist for a uh, Texas supermarket displays. Please hold on, I'll be with you in one moment. This way it's really not going to an automated attendant, but it's going to an announcement that's in Sue's voice. Because I know that you, know, you want that good first impression right. that people are calling in. But rather than Sue keep on answering the phone and say, Texas supermarkets, please hold, Texas supermarkets, please hold, She's just basically doing that manually. We can do it for her automatically. So when the call comes in, if she doesn't pick it up, she knows that it'll be picked up by the phone system, given that quick announcement. And as soon as she hangs up from that call, the next call comes in. Okay. All right, and this way she's also answering them in the order that she's receiving them. Because when I was watching her at the front desk, she would go ahead and put them on hold, but when she go to pick them back up, she was picking up the person who had just called in, and the person who had called in earlier was still on hold. Mm. So if we do it this way, because really all I'm doing is creating like a little mini call center just for one person. You don't have to be American Airlines to need a call center, <laughs> right? You don't need a lot of people. What happens is, is that when she calls in, if she's on the phone, it'll ring four or five times on her second button. She doesn't pick it up, it'll go to that announcement. But she knows, and she can also see it in her display, my computer monitor, she can see the phone number and who's calling and everything. All right, and then she can tell the person, all right, thank you, transfer them as soon as she hangs up, she's got that next call. 
Let's yeah, let's definitely see if we can schedule this this demo for sure. Okay, we'll we'll take a good look at that then. And um, look at that small call center application. You've got your paging in the warehouse. I got that as well. And the owner would like to have an office, a yeah, phone in his uh, home office. Yes, he would. In, in his home. Okay. So we have four people. We're looking to make the purchase by the end of the month. And I think we'll go ahead and uh, I can schedule that for you. Anything else that you can think of? That, that answered all my questions. Because I've got enough information to put a proposal for you together, at least a budgetary proposal, get a good overview of it, and then during the demonstration, some things might change and we'll adjust it from there, but at least we'll have a starting point. Okay. Is that all right? That sounds fair. That's good. Hey, Daniel, appreciate your time. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. All right. I've got to go see that phone room. All right. Let's go. All right. Okay. Come on, guys. Uh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Now. What question didn't I ask in the entire tirade of questions? There was one question I did not ask. And somebody gets it, I'll give you 20 bucks. Do you have time for a few questions? <laughs> or, no, we went through that one. We went through that one. Okay, I'm no, we went through that. That. There's one question <laughs> yeah. that actually, so far, this deal looks pretty good, right? I mean, I, may be, I might be driving home. I might stop and buy my wife up dozen roses, buy myself a bottle of black label, because I'm already selling, I'm already spending my my uh, my commission money. That was a nice interview. I got a good deal going. A couple of things here that you can't put aside. One, was he unhappy with his current vendor? No. No, he's doing okay. I'm pretty happy with him. He's doing okay. That's a major deal, right? That's a, I mean, if he's happy with this incumbent vendor, think of your own clients. If they're very happy with you, why are they going to change from you? You've been taking care of them. Now he said he's okay. But there was another one, though, that I questioned I did not ask that is on my survey that many people forget to ask. So, Daniel, come on back. All right. Hey, Daniel, I, I forgot to ask. Does your company have any other locations? Yeah, we, we actually have four other locations in warehouses. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, just around the U.S.? Or? Yeah, around in, in those, uh, where our five outside reps are, we've got one in each of the northwest, south. Oh, you west. do? Yeah. What phone system do they have in those other locations? Uh, those, those are the, the Avaya's as well. So they're all Avaya? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, Daniel, what's the chance of this this new system you're getting, what's the chance of this one not being in Avaya? Uh, I guess if it's not going to tie in with the other ones, it might be hard to not be in Avaya. Okay. I, I mean, Daniel, let Let's look at it this way. I mean, I can give you a proposal and everything. I don't mind doing the demo and all that, but if you're just looking for a bid, all right, I can give you a proposal. Is that what you need? That, that's really what we're needing. We're, we're, we're needing just to keep a via, you know, make sure that we've got the right, the right quote out there. All right, I appreciate your time. I'll get back to you. All right. All right, thanks. <laughs> I just lost the sale. I forgot to ask, do you have any other locations? I have seen it, heard it been in the room with other people that work for me that never ask the question, do you have any other locations? Now, in the world of IP, that's a killer, right? Because what do you want to do? Which is a strength for us. We can tie in other locations. But if he already has a VIA in the other four sites, and you don't know, maybe they've already been upgraded. This is just another site that's being upgraded and they're moving. What's the probability of you getting that sale now? Just went down a lot, didn't it? However, I'm still going to give him a quote. Why? You're cheaper than a buyer. <laughs> if he's going to buy a buyer, let him sell it at the lowest margin. <laughs> I'm going to give him the ammunition he needs to buy it at the lowest price possible from a buyer because all he wants is another proposal to negotiate from who he really wants to buy from. Right? However, when he leaves this job, and he goes somewhere else, and he needs to buy a phone system, who do you think he might call? Even if he can't buy, because he's in a position where he has to buy a buyer. But what happens? He's an IT manager. I'm going to give him a proposal. Heck, I'm going to come down and just give him the demo anyway, even though I know I'm not going to win the deal. Who cares? He's an IT manager. He works for a pretty good-sized company. 
He talks to other people. He might come back to me and say, you know, Bill, I'm not able to buy it here, but I've got these other people. They need a phone system. Daniel, I'm sorry, but give me a referral. Right. All right, any IT groups you belong to? All right. You like, yeah, I'm very impressed with your solution. The pricing is great, but we have to buy it by it. It's a corporate thing. Okay. The other question was, now in this case, this is corporate headquarters in this scenario, but does your corporate headquarters need to be involved in the decision-making process? 